So I thought we'd chant a little bit tonight to begin our time together. So it's nice to just um, orient the heart and the direction of connection and relationship. And even before we begin chanting to, to remember that these teachings are always relational and it's through relationship, through connection, that we actually get a glimpse into the teachings. It's such a beautiful a beautiful expression of a life to have carried the teachings forward orally through relationship by one person talking to another. And so to remember that when we chant, this was a way of remembering the teachings, remembering the stories. And so we're actually doing something that people have been doing for 2,600 years to invite the teachings to sink in. We're actually inviting, being invited into relationship with our ancestors, with our spiritual ancestors. And although it may, we may not know what the words mean always, sometimes chanting in Pali, this ancient language that was spoken at the time of the Buddha, is a way to really to align this heart in relationship with our spiritual ancestors. Like, oh gosh, this ancient language that was spoken so long ago, these teachings were passed down this way. And I too am a part of that. I'm a part of this legacy, the residue of all of this practice, people before us have practiced so diligently to remember, to remember what's important, to remember to include our entire lives in this path. And we'll get to more of that. But just taking a moment to really align ourselves with history. Imperfect human beings just like us who did the hard work of waking up. When it felt impossible, when it felt like all the cards were stacked against us, when it felt like we didn't know what we were doing, we were just floundering just this reorienting back to the teachings as a spiritual seeker, like, oh, I'm just going to see if there's something here that's going to help me. And the kind of care that's passed on human by human, you know, a bunch of people that just, this is kind of how I feel like I'm, I am a lot of the time, like I'm just figuring it out. I don't have things figured out, but I care enough to keep learning and sharing what wisdom and compassion ha this heart has been able to access. And that's what people did. They just kept talking about the teachings, sharing and passing it forward, moving it forward. So it's, I don't know about you, but it feels nice to remember that, like, oh, these aren't perfect people, you know, over 2,600 years who have passed the teachings down, but human beings who have struggled through life, didn't know what they were doing and tried to figure things out and kept learning and sharing and learning and sharing and learning and sharing. And just like we're doing now. So, We'll chant the refuges, which are at the top of the page. And then we'll go down and we'll chant the 
Buddhist words on loving kindness. And then we'll go right into a, a meditation period. And we don't have to, you know, try to be good at anything right now. Just inviting the words to sink in, inviting ourselves to be a learner on this path and see what wants to take root. And although, so this, so I'll, I'll um, yeah, you'll, you'll probably pick it up quite easily. But if you want to, you can chant along or you can just listen. So the refuges. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhamam Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami Dutiampi Buddham Saranam Gachami Dutiampi damang saranga chami. Dutiampi sangam saranga chami. Tatiampi budam saranga chami. Tatiampi damang saranga chami. Tatiampi sangam saranam gachami. Now let us chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness. So before we do this, this little hash marks, uh, when the hash mark goes like this, you go down a tone, and when the hash mark goes like this, <laughs> you go up in tone. So it's, this is what should be done. Simple. But again, you can chant along or you can just listen. All right, start that over. Now let us chant the Buddha's words on loving kindness. This is what should be done by one who is skilled in goodness and who knows the path of peace. Let them be able and upright, straightforward and gentle in speech, humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied unburdened with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud and demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove wishing in gladness and in safety, may all beings be at ease, whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, 
those born and to be born. May all beings be at ease. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life, her child, her only child. So with a boundless heart, should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness, over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding by not holding to fixed views, the pure hearted one having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires is not born again into this world. without any force or demand. Inviting the wisdom represented in these words to land in the heart. And remembering that at the heart of our study and practice is the deepest kind of inclusion, the most radical kind of inclusion. where all of our identities, our psychological patterns, our conditioning, the manifestation of the beauty and the unfinished right here in our hearts and also in the world where all of that belongs. And 
It belongs because it exists. Every expression of our humanness exists for a reason. And so in this way of saying yes to belonging, yes to radical inclusion, it's just a nod or an acknowledgement that, oh, this is here, this is true. This is real. We can just take a pulse, like what does that feel like? To include to extend an invitation. To bring our full complicated beingness into awareness. And so from this foundation of yes, having cultivated an attitude of inclusion, we can get close. Get close to what it's like to be alive. to breathe, to have a body. To know what it's like to breathe, to have a body. To have a body that feels, ears that hear, all of the senses that do their jobs. We start to see moment by moment that experience comes and experience goes. Sound, body sensations, breath. From this attitude of yes, This belongs. 
We start to feel into the deepest truths. Everything is moving. And part of this journey is we, we're in touch with that which is sticky. I don't like this or don't like that or memories come forward of previous moments, fears, anxieties, agitation. So this gets to be included as well. Right here beside the breaths. Right here beside the sensations of the body. wonderful that we are cultivating the sensitivity to not be afraid to be in our life, to feel the things that we feel, to be impacted. The heart is sensitive, so there's residue. The heart is sensitive, so there's impact. And of course, this comes forward in our quiet moments. I just trust that everything that moves is a force of nature. It belongs. No need to push anything away. can still be relaxed. Feel the coming and going of experience. And trust the goodness of sensitivity the goodness of intimacy, the goodness of being real and in relationship with our life, with our hearts, with each other, with history, right here and right now. We'll continue in silence for a while longer.
And opening your eyes when you're ready, coming back into the room with everyone. Thanks for your practice, everyone. Feel free to take a minute to step away from your computer if you'd like and stretch your legs, move your body. Welcome again. Wondering if anyone is here for the first time. And if so, if you'd like to unmute yourself and say hello. So, what are we gonna talk about tonight? Yeah, I've just been, really reflecting on this relational component, this relational aspect of the teachings and how it, yeah, how the teachings can be passed down in a way that amplifies the relational aspect of practice and, um, some sometimes the the conditions come together and in such a way that we we miss it. And so I was sort of reflect been reflecting on um, the past year a little bit, and last week we there was I don't know if you all saw the new moon last week. It was about Wednesday or Tuesday or Wednesday earlier in the week, and was so big and beautiful. And it was also, you know, the celebration of the Buddha's enlightenment and the Buddha's birth all in on, on one day, this holiday called Wisak. And so just the and that coincided with the one year anniversary of the lynching and murder of George Floyd. And so it just felt like a an important time to to feel into all of the you know, the teachings and the way and give have some gratitude for all of the humans who have struggled and practiced and taught and not just in the spiritual lineage that we're practicing in the sharing the Buddhist teachings, reflecting on our lives and finding ways to be more skillful and compassionate and understand more deeply the depth of the teachings. But also in the ways that you know, humanity just expresses itself, all the good that's there, the farmers that cultivate the ground and this land that's been stewarded by indigenous people for so long and the ways that we create communities that are really imperfect, but we keep trying to do that. Right? Just all of these ways of relating to life and that we're benefit that we benefit from. Seems worth a bow. 
of the forces of humanity among us that contribute. There was this um, article in Lion's Roar. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'd like to read it to you. Well, look at that, June 2nd, a year ago. This is written by Zinju Earthland Manual. It's called Darkness is Asking to be Loved. By now we have lost the tiny sense of peace we created for ourselves. Our composure is an idea long gone, reflected in the grinding of our teeth and locked jaws. If you're still holding up trying to meditate, I invite you to fall down. Fall down on the earth. Come down here and smell the sweat of terror on your skin, overpowering the scent of agar wood. Come down on all fours and greet the darkness that reeks of death, reaches out its desperate hand and asks to be loved as much as we love the light it gives. Come down here on this earth and breathe for those gasping for air. Hear each scream as a bell that never stops ringing. Bury your face in the mud of this intimate place in this shared disease and tragedy. If you have nothing to say, now is the time for the deeper silence toned that does not apologize or seek something kind to say. And yet the deeper silence is not quiet. It whispers in the dark and wakes you from the nightmare. Come down here and be still on the earth. Let loose shame, rage, guilt, grief, pain, and make a river of it. Come down here, catch the love poems hiding in the shouting. Watch the unfolding of the seasons from the ground. Look up at the sky. And when it hurts from being down here so long, roll over and see what you couldn't see from the other side. Breathe out loud, no particular posture needed. Fall down onto the earth, fall off your soft cushions. Come down here, come down here where the only lullaby tonight will be the sound of your heart drumming the songs you were born with. Poets have a much better way of saying it. A message that goes right to the heart and seems to really express the teachings in such a profound way. I feel like I could read that once a day. I've read it many times in the last week, but you could read it once a day and feel into something in a more deeper way than I did before. And there are many ways to receive the teachings, receive the Buddha's wisdom, to receive the, the benefits of practice over generations. And sometimes it's a lot easier than we expect a lot simpler, maybe not easier, but at least simpler, less complicated. Just falling down on the earth, letting life move us, feeling beauty and the pain. And this is what we're, this is what we train to be able to do skillfully, right? to feel life, to let it move us. And sometimes this sincerity is everything. Just remembering that we're following something that we are seeking I was speaking with a friend the other day and 
it just hit me, you know, I've had this long friendship with this person and it just hit me in this moment, like, wow, you really make kindness your friend. You know, they were speaking about some really difficult things in their life. And it was just remarkable, like, oh, you're really, you're really befriending life. Relating to these experiences, these quite difficult, conflictual things, people, relationships that are challenged, but doing their best to just keep orienting, turning towards the North Star, see what kindness has to offer here. And even when it feels really challenging, not sure how to do this, but I know that it feels much better when this heart can be sensitive. So many of the stories in the scriptures and the Buddhist scriptures are told in conversation, or people talking to each other, the Buddha's responding to somebody's question or the story being told. The stories are really, really speak to me. I'm curious about the, the environment and the conditions and the culture and what's going on there. There's this story about this um, Patachara, this enlightened being at the time of the Buddha who lost, had uh, lost a lot and lost her husband and two children in the same day and learned that her family, family's house burned to the ground and her parents died. And she's really grief stricken and Yeah, just coming undone. She takes off her clothes. She's just not in her right mind. She stumbles into a meditation, into the place where the Buddha is teaching or is, is there and naked. And some of the monastics are like, get her out of here. And the Buddha's like, no, give her a robe. She's welcome here and then speaks directly to her and and it's like you know what i hear in the what the buddha says is something like oh, this this belongs this is your teacher this life that's difficult is your teacher and so much of how he responds to her in this moment is like I'm here to care about you, not to tell you what to do or what to think or how to change, but my job is to care about you. It just, it really moves me even when I'm just remembering it. And this is a lesson for us and how we learn to do community, how we learn to be in relationship with each other how we learn to be in relationship with the only the, with the with the experiences of our lives individually our families collectively it's not a straightforward path right patachara lost it grief stricken really challenged i don't know what to do And yet somehow was fortunate to find another being that was willing not to throw, was willing to practice kindness, was willing to follow the thread of kindness, which inspired her to do the same, to trust the North Star, right? That it's possible to, it's possible to trust sensitivity even in the most painful moments.
And it's, it's said that as she practiced and, you know, all of this came forward, all of the loss and her loss of her children, the loss of her husband, the loss of her family, this came forward in her practice. Of course it did, right? Did any of us ever sit down and our, our lives not come forward to us? <laughs> it doesn't work that way, right? All of these losses came forward and she's sitting by the, by the river and being with it. And she gets this insight just watching the river that, oh, some lives are long, like the deep grooves in the, in the sand. Some lives are, sh are really short, like the shallow grooves in the sand. Some people live a long time, some people live a short time. And this is all a part of nature, but no matter how long we live, we're all gonna, we're all gonna die. And so it's through the, it's right in the middle of her life that she, that she is, that she finds a way, finds a path, that she understands something deeply. It's through the, the compassion of her own heart to stay right there in that sensitivity and difficulty to meet it, to feel it, probably to cry. Probably to not know what to do. And this is how it is for us. This is how we go. It was I listened to a podcast uh, episode on 10% happier. Some of you might have heard it. Um, well, there are many good ones lately. <laughs> Stacy McClendon has a wonderful episode on 10%. Highly recommend it on courage. And Ayo Yatende, two days before that, podcast dropped with her genius. So we have the time, go to 10%, check out Stacy and Io. And also, um, let me find the, the reference here. I can tell you the name, I think it's, um, oh, no, I don't have it in front of me. Well, I think it's Michelle Gonzalez, but I am not sure. So I'll look it up and, and get it back to you. And I apologize that's not having that in front of me. But this uh, person who is a, identifies as being a former neo-Nazi and she is telling her story. Dan Harris is interviewing her, telling her story of the lifestyle that she lived and the changes that she's made and the work that she does to it's she has made a career out of mentoring people who are aiming to get out of those communities those behaviors and i was um, really really struck by the you know just how confused we can all be as we make sense of our lives. And she had some difficulties in childhood, which she spoke about, and um, which led her to see herself reflected in people that it could, could, could express anger, which, and one thing led to another. And she found herself in these, fell into these communities and these ways with other teenagers, Shannon Foley Martinez, Jessica. Yes, that's her name, I'm so sorry. Shannon Foley Martinez. Jessica put it in the chat for us. And then she 
learns that she's got a friend in another state and she's gonna take a road trip with a friend. And she ends up staying some time with this friend's mother. And this person doesn't sound like she does extraordinary things, but she keeps reflecting back who she sees her to be, right? This mother, this person she's staying with, keeps saying, I see you, I see you, I see you. And just asking questions like, well, don't you wanna, what do you wanna do with your life? Why don't you take the SAT? Why don't you go to college? Why don't you do this? Here, here's a pencil, here I'll drive you. You know, just small efforts that, and she started to then see herself a little bit differently, like a person who could connect and a person who could perhaps live differently, have a different future. And how that is such a, it's an extraordinary story. And you talk about it in a big way, like, this person who identified as a neo-Nazi, then getting out of that life. And, you know, I wouldn't, I don't think it would be fair to limit the story into like, you know, this one experience is with this person who helped her turn things around. It was so much more than that. And all these intricate ways that either goodness or unfinished business was pulled, pulled into the fore. And this is kind of, this is the way it is for us that through our practice, we are, we're, we confront the most difficult places that we've visited in this life. The, our childhood wounds, our psychological wounds. And so it's really important for us to develop the skill and the value of inclusion so that we begin to feel and understand something deeply right in the middle of our lives. Like we don't have to somehow leave this complicated, imperfect human experience in order to awaken, right? We actually do that right here in the midst of our challenges and the mess that feels like it's unresolvable and and the opportunity that we have for each other to to be sincere which means both acknowledging the challenge, but also reflecting what we see, the possibility. Like, oh, you're a human. And there's a possibility of this life to express beauty. I don't know about you, but it really feels like it, it feels like a challenge and also something that I'm practicing with my own heart because there are plenty of, I really don't even need to take the show on the road. I could just sit here and feel into my own imperfections. Like, oof, don't like that, don't like that, don't want that, don't like that. This is, you know, my narrative day in and day out. I'm sure I'm not alone here. And to also be brave enough to go like, yeah, sweetie, you're learning. And to remember to notice, oh, you, you've got a skill here or strength, or this heart is good. Look at it in this moment. Don't be afraid. Look at that right here. 
This is all a part of our practice. One of the a, a phrase that's sometimes used is this phrase of spiritual bypass. This false idea that we're more awakened than we actually are. This pretending. So this noticing our own kindness isn't pretending. Or this noticing our own goodness isn't pretending. It's actually just having a more balanced view, a more balanced view of humanity, the humanity that's expressed right here in this life. It makes it possible to see it in the world. But spiritual bypass is a different kind of thing. It's like this pretending to be more awakened than we are, or this um, appropriating the teachings. But the benefit is so vast to be messy, to be alive in our mess, and to be able to name that, you know, like to not pretend like here, here we are, here I am. A total mixed bag. Some beauty, some unfinished business some expression of psychological wound that, you know, oh, this is my, these are my attachment issues that are coming to the fore right here now. Oh yeah, look at that, total mess. Oh, and that the beauty of this sensitive heart that can feel it and connect and be honest and be sincere. And then to watch, you know, every expression of humanity that we can see and find in the world do the same thing. That's like the opposite of spiritual bypass. It's courage. This is from Tanisra, the end of chapter 12 and listening to the heart. She says, these days it seems the world is getting more chaotic and dangerous, but there is also potential here. As the shadows are drawn into the light of our awareness, there's the opportunity to free human consciousness from old dysfunctional beliefs. Rather than using spirituality to push away what is held in the shadow, the invitation is to touch our wounds with loving awareness so that we can move beyond them. As a global consciousness, we are in an evolutionary process. It is painful, confused, and fraught with danger. However, as each of us awakens beyond the apartheid of our minds, as we choose to live beyond the energy of fear and oppression, we will birth the winged butterfly of our future. So don't be frightened, dear friend, if a sadness confronts you larger than any you have ever known, casting its shadow over all you do, you must think that something is happening within you. And remember that life has not forgotten you. It holds you in its hand and will not let you fall. Why would you want to exclude from your life any uneasiness, any pain, any depression, since you don't know what work they are accomplishing within you. Just some inspiration to really belong.
Thanks so much for your patient, kind attention tonight. Saved a little bit of time in case you have comments, reflections, questions, disputes. Everything's welcome. <laughs> Perhaps we'll close. Patrice, would you do us the honors again? I would be happy to lead us in sharing the merit, this really beautiful act of imaginative generosity. So if there's any goodness to our practice, any benefit, any blessing, any merit, we would gladly share it with others. In fact, if we could, we would give it all away, every bit of it, joyfully, gladly, happily. We would share it, give it all away, if we could. We would give it to our parents, our teachers, our families, our friends, our community, we would give it to those we really like and those we don't like at all. We would give it to all persons everywhere. And in addition to the two-legged, we would give our blessings to the four-legged, the many-legged, the winged, the scaly, the slithery, the thin, we would give it to all beings everywhere. May all beings find a path of peace. May all beings be free from suffering. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone. Have a good night. Good night.